one of the things they did when we were in, in Thailand is, I guess they actually flipped to have a TV commercial made. Um, if I can find that. I'm not sure if this is what, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, while in Thailand, they actually put together a TV commercial that uh, I guess won, won a couple different Clio Awards, or I don't know, I guess it's some, some decent deal. So if you were unlucky enough to be over in Asia, you would have seen my ugly mug on your TV set every so often. Before I finish playing that, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the, the phrase uh, "live in la vida loca," le leading the crazy life. Um, well, somewhere along the way, we started kind of joking about living la vida loca, and somehow that morphed into living la vida Logan, um, and completely just fucking around and joking. Um, I said it, and as it turns out, that was what they used on the damn TV. Commercial. So you'll see as I play this, um, immediately after I said it, I just cracked up. So I mean, you can see my smile at the very end. <laughs> One of the most embarrassing things I think I've ever said. But uh, yeah, so be careful what you say when there's cameras on. Um, again, I saw more airports and went through more uh, security checks during that two weeks than I could ever hope to go through. You know, again, here's just actual filming of the, the TV commercial. Um, you know, and so from there, I mean, that, that, that enabled me to do quite a bit of stuff, sort of get my name out a little bit more, um, certainly gave me tons of uh, uh, inspiration in terms of the cities that I went to, the buildings I went to, the people that I saw, um, you know, real fascinating time. And from there, I mean, you know, K-Swiss also did a few other events around, um, one of which was in South Africa. Um, South Africa is just an amazing place to, to be. I mean, the unfortunate thing is like the landscape there doesn't really inspire me that much. I mean, it's kind of hard to do a stencil of this, but uh, just visually, it's, it's a, a stunning place. Um, I, I forget what they call them. They're not the favelas, but basically like the favelas down there is where I was really hoping to get into. But, um, you know, South Africa is just extremely dangerous. So uh, everyone I talked to discouraged me quickly from going in there. And um, as it turns out, uh, one of the guys that I met, um, just kind of a surfer guy, really nice guy, uh, one day him and his friend were surfing. After they finished up surfing, you know, they both got in their cars and drove off in separate directions. He found out a little bit later that his other friend had got run off the road, uh, kidnapped, all of his money was transferred out of his bank account, and then he was shot in the head and left for dead. So saying that South Africa is dangerous isn't just a a saying, I mean, to, to actually have someone that, well, I didn't know him, but I knew, certainly knew his friend, um, is a bit odd. You know, and you can see, like, here's that piece that I showed you the photo from earlier when we were in, in Tokyo. So, as you can see, I keep trying to, like, you know, usually whatever I show, wherever I go, the next show has, you know, photos from that place. more in South Africa. Um, these are completely indulgent, uh, indulgent photos and have nothing to do with art, but um, it's just crazy going down there. They have a cheetah sanctuary where you can actually go in and kind of pet injured cheetahs. Um, you know, you can do cage diving with great white sharks. It's just an absolutely insane place to go. Um, you know, a few other ones we've done, like this is another event that, that happened in, uh, in Melbourne, Australia, again with 610. 
mean, I think I've been to eight or nine different countries with him. Um, he's originally from Sweden. You know, again, more interviews. Uh, these are more... Uh, You know, around this time also, um, stenciling was very well suited to, to my sort of aesthetics and work ethic. I really liked the detail in it. I liked sitting down and kind of, zo kind of zoning out. But, um, you know, one of the problems that, that I started coming up against is that stencils are such a time-consuming process that I really kind of felt like I was, I was missing like, that sort of immediacy of creation, of just being able to kind of like just draw, you know, freehand. Like any of you that... If you've seen like David Cho draw, like he's one of those guys that I'm envious of because he can show up to a blank wall and within 20 minute, minutes have it filled, you know, with some content or some meaning to it. And so I was always looking for a way to kind of, to sort of achieve that immediacy of creation. And I found it in, in doing these like high, um, high dynamic range photography, you know, and since I was going out and taking photos already, it wasn't too far of a leap to just turn around and, and actually showcase the, the photos themselves. Um, and for those of you who don't know what a HDR photography is, basically you bracket a, a photograph. So you take like one at regular exposure, one above exposure, one underexposed. Um, and then essentially you kind of merge them into one photo that kind of averages out everything. So that like the areas that would normally have too much shadow, like here, um, you actually get like a full range of, of how it, how it would look if you could, uh, you know, average it out. You know, and so this kind of opened up a whole new world to me. I mean, certainly stencils are still the primary thing that I do, but the photography is, has always sort of been a passion of mine. And this kind of led into me going into different abandoned spaces, going into different subway tunnels. Um, this piece is actually from an old abandoned uh, psychiatric facility in Melbourne, Australia. 